Are you tired of memorizing a whole textbook for use of or solving like 420 step problems in AMC 10? Or are you tired of spending one and a half hour coding a single solution to Usico? Or are 75 minute tests just too short for you? Well then you're in luck. Welcome to Usico. Re really rolled off the tongue, not gonna lie. Hello everybody, I'm Carr, and finally we're gonna be talking about USNCO, US National Chemistry Olympiad. Unfortunately, Usico was taken by the Computing Olympiad, which is indeed superior, but, okay fine, fine, maybe not superior, but this one's called USNCO, and it is the Chemistry Olympiad, and it's pretty epic, not gonna lie. Now, I personally don't have much experience at all with Chemistry Olympiad. The only thing that I've done personally is take practice tests, so I know kind of like the time allocation, I've seen what's on the test, I know all that good stuff, but in terms of actually taking the Olympiad at the actual time and actually like qualifying in it, no experience, none whatsoever. But Thankfully for you guys, I got a lot of good information from my friends who did go to like high honors and regionals, which is pretty good, top 150, and he gave me a lot of good information. So I'm gonna dump it on you guys. You guys ready for this? Yes, you are. Let's do it. So first off, how does this thingamajig work? Well, I was confused about this in the beginning because like, it's like completely different from all the other Olympiads. It isn't just take an exam, you qualify based off your score. It's kind of more complicated than that. So let me break it down for you guys. First round, 60 questions, all multiple choice, 110 minutes. So don't worry, it's like a lot of time, 110 minutes. And basically this is like the open exam and this is gonna pit you against other people in your school. So basically once you've taken this exam, your school nominates the top two scores to go to regionals. However, you need to meet a certain regional cutoff in order to go to regionals. So even if you're like the top of your school but your score is just not good enough, you might not go to regionals. So, it's a combination of two things. You need to be top two and you have to be above the cop. So, it's a lot harder than other Olympiads, depending on like how competitive your school is. So basically, this first exam covers a lot of things that are basic chemistry knowledge. So that's basically like all your AP Chem, pre-AP Chem. Like honestly, pre-AP Chem is completely fine. So like in my school, there's like honors chemistry. And basically, that covers like all the basic chem you need to know for Chem Olympia. Like I'm taking a semester of AP Chem and it hasn't really covered anything new that would be on this test. So just to make that a little bit more specific, first, there's like stoichiometry and chemical reactions. That's like obvious. You have to know how to do that. And you have to do it like decently fast. Not super fast because you have 110 minutes, but yeah, you need to know stoichiometry and chemical equations. Then there's equilibrium, of course, solubility, kinetics, what else? Well, yeah, that's like all the AP Chem, well, Okay, just know all your AP Chem stuff, know all your pre-AP Chem stuff, and you should be good. Now, the additional stuff that I did not know that weren't covered in Honors Chem for me are the following. You got Organic Chem, and you got Electro Chem, which are the two main things that I had no idea how to do. What I basically did is I took the AP Chem textbook that my school gave me, and I looked at the Electro Chem chapter. I just read through that, like, like I read through that, like, a couple times. I did all the problems or whatever. And that's how I got better at Electrochem, and then I did, like worked on the mock tests and like worked on the problems in that. For organic chem, it's kind of a bit harder, but like you could you could like search it up online. There should be like a basic like rundown of organic chem. You don't have to know that much, really. All you have to do is you have to know some basic vocab. You have to know some very basic like compounds like esters, ethers, like carboxylic acids, functional groups, that kind of thing. But other than that, it's not really that much organic chem. There's basically just like a section of like five questions at the end that's organic chem, and then the rest is just like mixed up. It's like kind of ordered in difficulty. So in the beginning, you got basic AP chem stuff, stoichiometry nonsense, then you go to equilibrium, then you go to electric chem, and then you go to organic chem. So it's kind of ordered like that. So anyways, in terms of how you should learn it, the thing is like, I don't see how you could self-study this because like personally, the AP, like, Honors Chem was so helpful for me. Like, like I don't really see how you could learn from a book. Like, sure, you could do all the problems and whatever, but there's all these exceptions, there's all these vocabs, there's all these random things that you might not, like, pick up on if you just read a textbook. Teachers know what these important things are, and honestly, it's a lot easier if you take a chemistry class. But if you just don't have access to a chemistry class or you're too young and your school doesn't let you do that, then what you could do is you could read the textbook and do the problems and you should be in pretty good shape. The textbook that I use is Zoomdoll, so in case you want to check that out, you can use that. A good uh, organic chem textbook is Klein. You could also check that out if you want to do organic chem. Alright, so in terms of competition strategy, it's 110 minutes, so basically my strategy is Spend time on the stoichiometry problem because you do not want to mess up stoichiometry. It's the easiest thing you can get, so free points. Don't waste, like, don't skip over it because you have plenty of time. So spend your time on stoichiometry and don't waste time looking at conceptual questions that you don't know because, like, it's conceptual, right? Even if you look at it for like a hundred minutes and you have ten minutes for the rest, you're still not going to get it because it's conceptual. So basically, the way to break it down is if you know how to do it, like in the first like 
one minute from looking at the problem, then do it. If you can't do it, then just move on and work on the other problem. Alrighty, so now we have finally gotten past the first round. And the second round is the cool part, because that's where you get recognition. Alright, so basically what my friend told me is that getting to the second round really isn't that, like, important. Like, a thousand people make it is not, like, super prestigious or anything, but there are a lot of recognitions for it. Basically, there's three recognitions. First, you get high honors, that's top 50. Next is, oh wait, no, wait, no, sorry. Honors is 150. High honors is the top 50 and then camp is the top 20. So basically if you want to do chem olympiad You have to be able to make top 150 to get like good recognition So think about whether or not you want to like try that hard in order to get top 150 But like yeah, that's what you're aiming for. So how does the second round work? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than the first round. There's three parts three whole parts. What the heck? Well, anyways, the first part is multiple choice just like the first one except it's longer and it's like a lot harder there's a lot more emphasis on organic chem, so you guys are gonna have to study that more if you make it past the first level. And then there's also a free response part, but my friend told me that this is like kind of relatively easy. It's more like an AP free response, so if you can do well on AP chem, you're gonna be chilling on this, uh, like, whatever, um, I can't think. Free response on the second round, that's what it was. And then the third part is a lab thing, which I think is gonna be crazy hard, but apparently just don't overthink it and you should be fine. Unfortunately, I don't see how you're able to practice the lab thing at home. Like, I mean, I don't have a burette just standing around and I don't have like a beaker of hydrochloric acid to pour like on my desk or anything, but you know, I don't know. I guess just look at like past exams and see what types of lab kind of thing there are and see like what skills you need in order to do them and then you should be good. Alrighty, so that's the basic breakdown of Chem Olympiad. You have a first round, that's multiple choice, and you gotta get top two in your school and above the regional cutoff. Then, you move on to the next level. That has three parts, you got the first, second, and third part. Bro, I'm trolling. Multiple choice, free response, and lab. And then, if you do top 150, you get high honors, If you, I mean honors. If you get top 50, you get honors. And if you get top 20, you get camp. So in terms of concrete steps, first, learn basic chem. Either do this through uh, honors chem, pre-AP chem, whatever you guys call it. And then, after you're doing that, then learn the additional stuff. Basically, that is electrochem and organic chem. So in order to do that, just look at the additional chapters in your book and you should be fine. And then last but not least, make sure you take mock exams because like a lot of the questions are really, really similar. Like I looked at like four years, like five years worth of practice exams and the problems are literally exactly the same. So there's basically like 50 problems that have like the same format and then like there's 10 problems that are just like random trivia and stuff. So if you're able to just do a bunch of mock exams, see what you did wrong, read up on what you did wrong, then you're like set. That's already like a 50. Then just reading the textbook and like just internalizing random stuff is going to get you the other 10 points. And honestly, like the cutoff is around 50 every time. So if you're able to do really well on like the like mechanical parts and on the parts that show up often, then you should be chilling. So that's basically all I got for Chemistry Olympia. Like, honestly, I don't know why I didn't do it last year. Like, I feel like I could have done decently well, considering that a lot of it is covered in Honors Chem, but I think it's a good thing to do. Like, as long as you've taken the Chem class before, it seems like something where you could apply your knowledge and all that good stuff. Of course, it's gonna be a lot harder than other competitions if you're an underclassman because you're competing with the upperclassmen from your own school. So that's already at a disadvantage, but you should guys to try it out, it's pretty epic. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you guys want more like videos about random Olympiads, I know that like a lot of you guys were asking for this one and I wasn't able to get it because I didn't have much information, but now I do. So just let me know. And then like if I get the information, I can always make the video late. Alrighty, as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.